Um, hello, I'm going to show you how to make this kind of rock, mountain, ice lake landscape inside a guy. Um, this is going to be a medium difficulty tutorial just because we have, we have trees, we have uh, water, we have uh, ice on the lake, we have some snow. We're also using a, a kind of a rock texture. So there's actually kind of, a, kind of a big one on here, but I do use the bare minimum, bare essential nodes uh, just to keep things simple. And also in the description, I'll include the tour file and that way you can kind of copy and paste sections out like the ice, for example, or, uh, you know, sections if, if you want to uh, use this as a blueprint. All right. So this is the tree. It's a medium sized tree. Um, this is the, all the texturing. Well, I guess this is the ice down here, but the, the reason why this kind of gets complicated or so tall is because we're using five different uh, textures, so the mountain, mountain, snow, lake, ice, water, trees. So the modeling stage is pretty simple. Uh, I'm going to try to get through through this as quick as possible. Um, also, I, simpl I simplified everything along the way. So the water is simplified, the ice is simplified, the erosion. This is the pathetic erosion, erosion stack right here, very simplified. Um, just in case anyone is a beginner. Um, you know, let's just try to simplify it as much as possible. Um, but once we get to about this stage, it's not, there's not going to be any hiding it. And uh, it's going to be, you might get lost here. Um, in fact, I might get lost here just, just talking about it. So, all right, let's get through that. Let's get uh, through this one. So for the mountains, this is kind of the mountain range. This is my first primitive object right here. So what I do here is mountain transform, mountain transform, mountain transform. Each mountain is a different seed, and I also use the raise option to make it more, more kind of fantasy-like. And in the transform, I just move the mountain to a different location, right? And combining them, and you can also use the add option up here, and that'll actually raise the mountain up, give you that drastic height variation. And we need that because it's going to be a the final result. As you can see, it's going to be like a ski hill, and we kind of need that path from top to the bottom. So that's what I'm going for with mountains. And that's also why I'm not using a range. I think this just gives you so much more control using a transform node. Okay. Um, erosion, erosion stack, thermal shaper, thermal erosion. Absolute bare bones. You could easily quadruple this. Thermal Shaper is nice to make it nice and pointy. Otherwise, you're going to get artifacts. Um, if, if you want it pointy and you don't use the Thermal Shaper, you're going to get lots of little sharp artifacts. So make sure you use the Thermal Shaper. And if you're not making it pointy, you can also make it round. So very essential. essential. And then here I am adding te uh, textures to the rock, as you can see. So to do this, also it's it's only adding it to the top of the of the cliffs rather than the bottom, as you can see. There's no there's no uh, texture down here. Um, and this is important if you're not using snow, um, because if you're using snow, it, it kind of it, it it blurs that out anyways in the bottom. But in case you're not going to use snow, you want to use a rock, rocky, rugged. Combine that, and then as the mask, use a slope, and I just invert that slope just to get the the the, tip, the tippity tops, of the uh, the cliffs, and that gives you texture along the top of the cliffs. Then I use a surface just just because it's a, a habit, I guess. And finally, we begin to the meat, meat, meat and potatoes of this tutorial, which is adding all these textures into it: the snow, the lake, the ice. And the trees and the rock. So <laughs> I'm gonna do my best to get through this as quick as possible. But so down here we have the snow. Oh, and before I begin, um, it's, it's it's important to do it in a specific order. So for example, lake goes on top of the snow because um, the snow changes the actual terrain. So that's why we want this the lake to go on top after the snow. 
and that way you get a nice smooth transition from snow to water. And then down here I have the ice, yep, the ice. So the ice goes on top of the lake, and then the trees have to go last for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why trees go last. Maybe someone can correct me on that, but I just find that if you want the trees to be textured inside of Gaia, then you want to have them always last. So that's why the trees are, are last. Okay, so let's talk about the first idea of the, the rock, the rock texture. Um, so to do that, I just I use the lake as the final output. And I use a, use a, uh, use a rock map, and that way, if, if, we can just, if we can just zoom in here for a bit. Um, I'm using gray and white, so you can't really, might not be able to really see it, but there is texture variation, and that's because of this nice rock map. So I plug a invert, and then I plug into the, uh, from the lakes into the invert, invert into the rocks. Then I use two set maps here, although I think, just to give the, the, the different colors, and then boom, that's a that's a basic rock. I'm sure you, you already know how to do that. That's a basic rock uh, texture. Now to get that to actually add the snow in, I add a quick color, and I just make it white. And this is from straight from the straight from the snow in the snowfall. I just combine that with the rock texture. And for the mask, I use from the snowfall mask. Pretty, pretty straight, straightforward. And now to get the water, as you can see, we have the water here. It looks kind of looks kind of funny because we still have the ice floating on top of the non-textured. But to get the water here, um, very basic water. I go depth, auto level, displace that. And that gives you a kind of shoreline around your lake, a very basic, basic shoreline. And but as you can see here, I like to add some deep, some deep, deep spots. So to add the deep spots from your displace node, warp that, and then blur that. Although it might look better with without the blur, but uh, that goes into a different cutter. Uh, a cutter is just two different colors that that make a, a, a gradient. Which, which is great for water. Then I combine those. That gives you some deep, some deep spots in your, into your water. And then I combine that with the snow and the rock textures. And down here as the mask, I believe I just use the lake. Yes, I use the lake output. And for some reason, I have to invert it. Uh, yeah, if you, if you ever run into problem problems while uh, using textures, just throw an invert node. An invert node, so sometimes that fixes the problem. Okay, now for the ice, so we have the water, the snow, water, rock, and then add the ice. Um, this is all ice, so this is modeling. This, per this first part is all modeling, unfortunately. I could use an ice flow, ice flow node, but I prefer to, 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 to do this way. I just think it's. Um, I, I just, I don't know, I just I like it. it, gives you more control. And this is, I took this kind of from quad, the quad spinners tutorial, but I simplified it a little bit and uh, made a couple changes. But uh, yeah, so just say from your uh, lake depth, clamp that down around your lake, and then use cells to kind of get some icebergs floating around. Combine those. Rocky to give it some elevation. Uh, variation and then aperture with the Aquila setting turned on. And now to get some cracks through that, as you can see down here, we got some kind of here's the Aquilons and here's some crack, cracks going through it, making them more natural. So I had two cracks, which are cracks are just kind of masks in case you don't know. And then, uh, um, oh, actually, I guess I must have changed it, but. Originally, this the, these were both the same. This one was just rotated, rotated with the transform node about 90 degrees to make it more, to give the the cracks more natural, uh, you know, random directions. And that should give you some nice 
random uh, cracks, and you can always change the cracks if you don't like those. You can just simply go to your cracks. I mean, you can always change your, your ice iceberg so if you don't like it, so go to your cracks and then change the scale in the outcomes. Pretty much all of these settings which will change your which will change your your ice some in some way. And uh, important step you want to clamp it down afterwards. Otherwise your icebergs are going to be taller than the trees you have up here. Let's oh, gotta load again. Right. Yeah make sure it's clamped down and we can just see that. Yeah, otherwise these ice like these icebergs are already sticking out. Um and like this shore is not my best work, but <laughs> if you're this if you're this zoomed out, I don't think anyone's gonna notice. So yeah, you want to clamp those ice sheets down or else they're gonna stick way way up too too noticeably. Okay, now we combine that because so, so now the ice looks like this, it's kinda all, all over the place. And just to make it sure, make sure it's only on the lake. First, we combine it with first we combine it with the rest of with everything else. And I believe that's just the the lake main output. Yes, it is. And now to get the icebergs just onto the lake, we combine uh, this with our. Where is this other coming from? Oh, I see. Oh, it's coming from both these. Okay, so we just use that, and then we use the lake as an output, as the as the mask. I mean, um, and I did blur. I did blur the lake mask for some reason. I think I was trying to uh, make it more of a nice transition. Transition. Um, I, you know, with, with some more nodes, you, you could probably do that. Anyways, that's how we got the ice onto the lake, and now. We're texturing the ice sheets themselves. So to do that, I just add a quick color, and that color is the entire mountain. But to make sure only the sheets transfer their color, we're going to need a mask just for the sheets. So back down on your clamp, on your, on your last clamp, we turn that into an absolute, and that turns it into a mask. We take that mask and I. I invert it, I guess. I don't, I'm not sure exactly why. Probably just just a habit from throwing invert in case it doesn't work. And I use it as a mask with the rest, with the, with our last texturing node. And now we have now we have ice on the Arnold Lake, so we're finally getting somewhere. We're trying to get through. I'm trying to get through this um, while being quick because there's just so much. We have, now we have the trees finally. Uh, yeah, otherwise you, you can get lost in this real quick. So, um, just, just there's so many textures. And finally, finally we add the trees. So, uh, the trees are actually the easiest step, but there's actually actually some modeling within this node we'll talk about. But first we, um, first we take a blur node, and that just comes straight from the lake output. Um, the lakes, you know, lakes, lakes mask on 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 our lakes node, and and that goes into the inhibition uh, output or input on our uh, arboreal node, which just means that trees are not going to be in the white area, which is the, the lake. So now within the arboreal node itself, oh, and and our final. Node, which with with the ice is where is um is the the main input for the arboreal. Okay, so within within the arboreal node, you want to make sure the flow is very high, and that's what gives you these nice ski hill effects. See how it's you could imagine yourself skiing right through these. That's because the, the trees react to the flow of the actual snow slopes, which is pretty great. So have the slope have the flow turn on. Have the altitude fall off turned off. Have the slope fall off turned off. Otherwise, you're going to end up with little ugly trees randomly all up and down your mountains, and they're just going to be really small and uh, look terrible. So make sure those are off. Everything else you can play with. Uh, patches can give some cool results sometimes. And then we turn that into FX set maps. 
which is where you, which is where you make them green. Finally, plug that into your final combined node, and then along with your other, with the you know the, the other textures, and as the as the uh, the mask for the final con the combined node, you use the colorize output on your boreal node, and there you have it, guys. I, I mean, I recorded this. I, I recorded this before, but it took like you know almost thirty minutes. So I tried to get through this as quick as possible, just because there is so much. Like, if you zoom out, it looks simple. I mean, you don't have that many nodes. Um, and but keep in mind, this is the bare essential node. So each one of these has a function, which is why it's kind of more complicated than it looks like. Um, if I were to go in again and make this. Um, more higher, more higher quality. I would increase the erosion stack a lot. I would add some flavor into the mountains because right now these are just def these are literally default mountains from the primitive de default node. So you could really get in there and make some changes, um, especially with the fold fold node. That is uh, great for alpine mountains. So I would definitely add one, one of those in there. Um, and this will be in the this this will be as a tour file in the description, so you can download that and um, use use this, use this as a blueprint. If you want to add or take away certain certain elements, um, like the ice, for example, if you want to add ice to your scene, you can just copy and paste that. Um, although this isn't the best ice, to be fair, but, to be fair, but it is the simplest ice I think I've seen, um, other than the ice flow node. But that's not really I don't really count that. Um, yeah, so if you guys enjoy this and uh, found something useful, I think really um, combining a lake with ice that's elevated um, with trees, with the snow, and with the terrain mask, you know, th that can be um, a little frustrating because if you get one step wrong, like if you put the the the, the, um, the lake before the snow. This whole area is going to be messed up, so you have to do it in a certain order. And the trees have, have to be last, I think, unless someone knows how to make trees not go last. But I don't see why, why not? But uh, yeah, it was. Uh, tell me if you if you guys like these kind of these uh, more of a deep dive tutorial, or if you guys prefer more simple modeling tutorials. Anyways, that's going to be it for today. But uh, yeah, see you guys next time. Bye.